Hey guys, it's Chessa and Maria, and we're in the Creative Grids portion of the Checker booth at Quilt Market in Houston. And today, Maria's going to tell you all about this brand new Creative Grids ruler or trim tool, better yet. So it's her specialty, and I'm going to let her tell you all about it. So take it away. Hey everyone, it's really great to be back at Quilt Market again. It's okay, you can keep walking. <laughs> So as Chessa said, I work with Creative Grids, which means I get to work with all of the designers that make the rulers. The next one that's going to hit your shelves is a 10 inch, well, let me back up, it's a skinny 10 inch curvy log cabin. So Jean Ann Wright has added again, doing another trim tool. You're going to have five rounds of narrow logs and five rounds of wide logs in order to make these blocks. So I've got some samples to show you the patterns to show you and some blocks to trim so you can see firsthand how easy and slick this works. Here is a pillow that she did and this is my samples and my patterns separately here. This is cut loose press pattern called shadow box pillows also by Jean Ann Wright. This is pattern number CLP JAW095. She is up to 95 patterns with Cut Loose Press, and I think that's pretty impressive and worth mentioning for her. This cute little table runner is called Carnival Table Runner. Here's that simple log cabin block that she put back to back and side to side for this simple curve and some pieces on the edge there to make it look like a carnival. That one is CLP JAW094, the Carnival Table Runner. And like all cut loose press patterns, you know they get printed to your with your shop information on there if you're doing a class. And you can order them at will and check them out on the cut loose press pattern website. <clears throat> hey Kevin, Kevin, can you hold a corner of this for me, please? Hello Rolando. I'm good, we're live, you want to be with us? Oh yeah, yeah, yep, Kevin is here this weekend to help you guys take orders and to help me hold this big quilt up. This one is called Silver and Gold, also with that same skinny 10 inch curvy log cabin trim tool. Say that 10 times fast. But it doesn't even look like a traditional log cabin, does it? She gave a very modern feel to this pattern by putting grays and whites in these wide logs, golds in this narrow corner, grays in this narrow corner, and the whites and golds in the wide ones here, and then putting them together and turning them. Doesn't even look like a log cabin quilt, which I think is really cool. And way to go, Jean Ann Wright. This one is CLP JAW093. Same ruler, different look. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing like putting you on the spot, right? <laughs> So let's take a look at the block itself. As soon as I don't want to be tangled up under here. All right, there we go. So now if you come over here with me, we're going to have Chessa shift just a little bit. I've got our rotating mat, which is also part of the topic for today's live, talking about our cutting edge tools. This one is 14 inches a 14 inch square grid so it measures about 14.38 inches and turns just like that so when you're trimming those blocks you don't have to pick them up and turn them you can turn your table around to do it so all of the curvy log cabins start with a center square a wide set of strips which for these are two inches and a narrow set of strips which are one and a half and you're going to combine those three elements to do those curvy blocks that I just showed you in the samples. Move my parts out of the way so it's clear as a bell. We're going to trim a block that looks just like this. The green is my center square and I'm going to start with a wide colored log and do narrow white logs to finish it off.
round number one looks just like that. You can see that none of these are really even. I've even got the pinked edge on there that's from cutting some scraps. I'm going to lay that on my rotating mat. I'm going <laughs> to need a second to adjust. Jess is trying to get it done. I'll tilt this so that they can see it. Let me get it lined up. I'm going to look for the narrow round one. Do you see how these words are upside down? I want to turn it and trim that narrow corner first. So here's narrow round one. I'm going to line it up on the block. Yeah, you're welcome to come closer. Don't be shy. And it's going to look like that under the ruler. Okay. I'm going to get out my rotary cutter. Of course, Creative Grids rotary cutter. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to depress that button, slide it to the R to open it up for right-hand cutting, and I'm going to trim. Look at that. When I add a little pressure, it does not even move. I'm going to turn that mat around. Now I'm going to turn the ruler, so I'm looking at the wide round one right here and line that up on my square. See that? That grip comes in handy when you're trying to show demos like this too. So a little bit of pressure, that's not going to move even a fraction. And there you go. There is my round one trim. So look at the difference. Untrimmed and trimmed. I'm going to add another round of logs to this, two more wides and two more narrows and trim again. There's round two. Isn't that such a huge difference? You know, you know you're adding the width to those pieces, but it always astounds me how trim that gets. I'm adding round two and I need to trim it again. You can see narrow round two is the white square. So every time I add another round, I'm going to move further into the ruler now. There's that narrow round two. I'm going to turn it so I can cut it. And turn it again to do the wide side. There you go. Round one to round two. Quite a difference, don't you think? I'm going to keep going for all of those rounds. until I get up to the end. Here I've added the five rounds. I've got five narrow pieces and five wide pieces added. I'm going to find round five on my ruler, which is right here. I always look to the center because I'm used to those traditional log cabins, but that round five is right here. And I'm going to lay that on the ruler with the narrows where they are and the wides where they are. And look at this. That's what it's going to look like on the mat. I'm going to cut around all four sides and my block is going to be done. Because I'm at that final round, I don't have to move the block or the ruler. I'm just going to turn so I can cut safely and finish my block. And just like that, I have another skinny 10 inch curvy log cabin block. So now I want to show you a couple variations. Add this to my pile of 10 inch blocks I have trimmed. 
For this one, I added the narrow log first. This one, the wide log is added first. Can you see a difference there? I don't know if you can tilt it onto the table, Chessa, a little bit. It's just a slight difference, but look at how much more rounded this one looks, where this one's got a little bit of a chunkier feel in the middle there. Start with that narrow one. Going to get just a little bit more of that narrow on there, a little bit more color. It just has a different feel to it. Same ruler, same technique, except for I swapped which ones I started with first. And last but not least, if you want to do a courthouse steps, here's the same, same, same layout, except for I did whites opposite of the center and colors opposite of the center sides. Narrows are still in the same corner. Wides are still in the same corner. So you're going to still use that same centering square for trimming that I did before. The beauty with these rulers is that you get a picture to show the different options, a couple of them, not every option by any means. A QR code that you can scan and go to our website to see a how-to video when we get that posted. And center cut measurements along with strip measurements printed right there on the ruler. These are not quite to the warehouse yet, but this is the newest one that we've got in the line. So keep your eyes open for that to become in stock. And you're going to get a fully illustrated set of instructions that come with the ruler, just like you do with the rest of our trim tools and specialty tools. Okay, I'd ask if there's any questions, but everyone's so busy walking around, I've got nobody standing here. So if you're here, come say hello. All right, <clears throat> I want to show you the left-handed tools that are in the family of cutters. Move my blocks and stuff out of the way. Where did the blue rack that you took from there? There's a couple left-handed ones on there. Whoop. You're okay. So for those of you that are left-handed, not only does our rotary cutter accommodate that, if, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to depress that button and slide to the right to cut right-handed. If you happen to be left-handed, you're going to depress that same button but go to the left to cut left-handed. So that's where these rulers come in. We have a six and a half by 24 and a half. You're going to see that the label is a little bit different. It's got this band of teal at the top and it has a black hand stamped on there for left-handed cutting. <laughs> I love market. <laughs> and that was Kevin who held the quilt up for me earlier if you're still watching from before. We have a six and a half inch square, which is one of our best sellers. It is always in the top 10. If you happen to be at market and want to see those, I've got a collection of the top 10 sellers hanging on the wall here. We have a 12 and a half inch square, same thing. You're going to see that teal band on there and the black hand is going to be stamped on there to show you that it's for left-handed cutting. I could do it this way, like mirror image, but that's the back of my hand. So, you know, that's not left, right? <laughs> There's a QR code on there to scan to see the basics of cutting with the rulers left-handed. It has all of the same features that our other 12 and a half inch square has. Same for the other ones. We simply mirror image the artwork so that now you as a left-hander can see those numbers right side up and across on the left-hand side of the ruler. There's also a four and a half inch square. And one of my favorite sizes, the six and a half by 12 and a half inch. So to show you the difference, here is the original. You see the black label. Here's the left-handed version, so that gives you a good eyeball view of the difference between them. If you notice those numbers on the ruler, one through six and a half, one through twelve and a half on the left-hand side, and for this one, they're on the right-hand side. If you want to do half-inch increments, you're simply going to take those rulers and use our turnaround feature, which is this simple. I'm going to turn them around. So now the numbers in black circles are going to be right side up and they're going to go from half inch up to 
12 and a half inch at the top and across. For the right-handed ruler, it's the exact opposite side, same thing. So depending on which measurements you're cutting, if you're doing the same cut over and over again, you might want that line that's actually labeled with that number in order to do it. Like our regular rulers, you're also getting 45 degree lines that intersect on the quarter inch mark here. So if you're trimming flying geese or any kind of a square in a square block that you need to add that extra quarter of an inch out there, it's marked clearly on that ruler. You get centering lines here with a bullseye in the middle to show you where exactly the center is. If you're cutting a six and a half inch strip and you want something specific in the middle, and you've got a 45 degree line and a 30 60 degree line for cutting half square triangles and for cutting diamonds which i just did recently with some friends i use that angle to get the first cut for the diamond and then whatever width i'm cutting as i worked my way across the strip i find that i use that a lot more than i thought that i would so in a nutshell you've got five rulers the 12 inch six by 12 and a half Six and a half, I always forget that. Six and a half by 12 and a half. Six and a half by 24 and a half. Six and a half inch square and the four and a half inch square. So we always like to hear what you want to see next. If you happen to be left handed and have a request, be sure to let us know. You can go to the Creative Grids website and email us. I take all kinds of suggestions and keep a list so that when we have meetings and decide I have information from you guys that are actually shopping for them on what you want to see. Now we say we're on the cutting edge because we do a lot of cutting in creative grids. I've already shown you the cutter a couple of times but let me show you what it comes in. It comes in its own zippered case. So the package is gonna look like this. You get a zippered case, it's empty. You get a rotary cutter that's loaded with a blade already. So as soon as you open this package, you're ready to go and ready to cut. If you happen to have more that you wanna store, the cases are available separately. If you need replacement blades, because you do a lot of cutting and your blades got dull, so I throw things on the floor here. <laughs> Our replacement blades come in a pack of two, a pack of five, a pack of 10, 30, and 50. So if you're buying for a store or retreat center or you just do a lot of rotary cutting, you can get 50 of them at a time. They're broken up into smaller containers inside, so you don't have 50 to try and work through as you pull a new one out. When you put that rotary cutter in its case and I open it up, I've got a oh, pocket where something fell out. There's some replacement blades. I've got my two and a half by four and a half inch ruler stashed in here because I use that a lot for trimming. But I've also got space for marking pens if I wanted to for my rotary cutter which is this. Now our handle is made of a zinc alloy, so it's got some weight to it. And if you haven't tried a heavy handled cutter, I would encourage you to try one. I hold this one a little bit further in my forward in my hand, about there, so that my fingertip rides on top for when I'm cutting. Now I've got total control wherever that blade is gonna go. And I'm not stressing out my wrist and my elbow and my shoulder by gripping it and pressing on it. So that weight of the cutter helps me cut and helps me keep more accurate. Like I said before, for right-handed cutting, there's an R here. For left-handed, there's an L. You simply press in that button and slide it over to expose that blade. When I close it, you're gonna hear a little click and it should lock into place so it's nice and safe. For left-handed, same thing, but the other direction. Back into the center for safety. Now my blade is dull, I need to change it. I'm going to turn it over and look at the back. Simply slide that little tab and off it pops. I can change that blade, put a new one on, slide it back in and snap it into place and I am ready to go. If you happen to have a 60 millimeter cutter that needs a new blade, we also came out with replacement blades for those. So now you can get the 60 millimeters in a pack of two or a pack of five. I absolutely love the quality of the blades and yes, I work here 
they don't pay me exactly to say that, but I can tell you, I have tried a lot of blades over the years. And even in my office, I have blades that were samples that were left over from something that yes, I work my way through. These guys last the longest and the best, especially the 45 millimeters. I think it's the combination of the heavy handle of our cutter, our self-healing cutting mats, and the blades. So that is my 10 cents worth for your day, but that is, that is the truth. Now as far as cutting goes, last year we teased you a little bit with this big table mat. And I'm only going to lift a little corner up for you, but this guy measures 28 inches across. 58 inches wide. It is printed the same on the front side as it is on the back side. So if this side gets marked up for some reason, or say it just finally wears out, you can flip it over and you've got a new surface. If you happen to be standing on that side of the table, the numbers that go across and up the side there face you. If I'm standing over here in this corner, these numbers face me. So my friend and I can both be cutting at the same time. We're not going to get in each other's way because we've got so much space. We also gave you yardage markings that start at one eighth of a yard up to one and a half yards across. So say you don't know how wide a piece is that you just pulled out of your stash. You've got an eyeball view right here. You've got a fourth of a yard, a half of a yard, whatever that measurement might be, but it's printed right there on the mat at a glance. So you don't have to get your other measuring tape out and measure or use the handy numbers that are on the mat in order to do that. The marks on here are the same as they are on our 6x8, our 12x18, our 18x24, our 24x36, and the rotating mat, and they match the markings on our rulers. So when you look at those rulers and see this grid work, that's the same grid work that's on the mat. It is up to you what technique you use when you're cutting. I have no preference for that. I have a preference for when I'm cutting, but as long as you're comfortable with what you do and you're getting good results, that's awesome and that's exactly what I want to hear. So, cutting mats, rotary cutter, replacement blades, left-handed rulers, 10 and a half inch log cabin blocks. We've got a lot of stuff for you to come and look at here in the booth. Let's show you the general block on there. I'm running out of things to say, Chesson. That's all right. So this is the ruler for the day, but it's also the newest one in the line, the skinny 10 and a half inch curvy log cabin that I buried. There it is. Huh? Sorry, skinny 10 inch curvy log cabin trim tool. This measurement is 10 and a half inches. So when you sew it into a quilt, it will be a 10 inch block. That's where the 10 inch comes in. But Another great one to add to the line for Creative Grids. Have a great weekend here at Market. Be sure to come and see us and say hi. I would love to meet everybody. And if you aren't here at Market, drop us a note on Facebook or send me an email because I'd love to hear what you're thinking. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you later.